making a Stuart model steam plant. Part 94, the plant is now complete and this is the final live steam test before dismantling it and shipping to California. This is the final episode of the series. If you've been watching this series, then you've probably noticed that this has not been an easy job. But I got there in the end. I'm going to supply some accessories with the steam plant to make it easier for the owner to assemble it and run it. Apart from some Allen keys and a couple of spanners, I'm also supplying this long length of silicone rubber tubing. I was going to use a piece of thick rubber piping, but when I fitted it, it actually leaked, so I've gone back to what I usually do and use silicone rubber. The blue piece of silicone rubber tubing is the gas pipe. One end fits to the gas inlet on the plant, and the other end is fitted to a high-quality steam tap from Cleveland Steam, which is well made and doesn't leak. Lighting the fire. Here I'm using a small blowtorch and I don't recommend this. I normally use one of these because you can press the trigger and introduce the flame directly to the burner before you open the gas tap. The explosion is considerably less than doing it the other way. And while on the subject of opening things, it's very important to at least open the window. Never run a steam plant indoors unless it's extremely well ventilated. After the run, it's really important to vent the boiler so it doesn't vacuum. On the preliminary test the other day, I didn't do that. As the steam disappears, the vacuum sucks all the water out of the tank into the boiler. As soon as I got a slight amount of pressure, I opened the blowdown valve to drain some of this water out. The blowdown valve goes to the sump, which in turn drains to a bowl on the floor. Before raising steam, it's important to pump some water into the boiler to make sure that you don't have an airlock in the pipes. As soon as you have a small amount of pressure in the boiler, it's time to fill the displacement lubricators. First of all, drain it from the previous run until oil comes out. And this next bit is very important. Close the boiler tap and also close the tap that goes to the engine. This part is vital because if there's pressure in the steam line to the engine, the cap will blow off and hit the ceiling. Already this displacement lubricator is quite hot because I opened the steam valve to the engine to warm it up. I had to resort to using a cloth because it was very hot. In the background now you can hear sizzling. The boiler is starting to reach its working pressure and that noise is coming from the safety valve. I'm filling the first of the displacement lubricators using steam oil. Not motor oil, not general lubricating oil and certainly not machine oil. This is superheater steam oil. As you can see, it's quite thick and gloopy, even when it's quite hot. I don't need to speak all the way through this steam test, I'm just going through the routine of starting up the steam test. Here I'm applying some lubricating oil to every one of the moving parts of the S50. Here in exactly the same way as I've just shown with the S50, I'm filling the displacement lubricator on the double 10. This is a Stuart displacement lubricator and it's slightly bigger than the one on the S50. I don't need to say much about this, the process is identical. This double 10 is still a bit tight and will need running in using steam. This is a good tip, the gas tanks freeze up. As the gas inside the tank evaporates, the tank can become chilled and even ice can form on the outside. Placing the gas tank in a bowl of cold water can help. When the S50 was running, I did notice that the gland was blowing. And no matter how much I tightened up the gland, it was still blowing. I fitted a new piece of graphited yarn and the leaking stopped. I couldn't show the process, all you could see was the back of my hand. In this next clip you will see the S50 running, not connected to the dynamo. As you can clearly see in this clip it runs very well and it's very powerful.
the whistle's not much good, it could do with a better one. My friend Andrew has just bought a whistle from Microcosm. It's a bit bigger than this PM Research whistle, and it actually whistles very loudly. I've opened the tap on the top of the condenser, which I would only normally do to drain the condenser. Time to switch off the video lighting. That's really all I can say in this steam test. I'm going to stop talking now and leave the rest of the video just running on its own. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.